ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فما فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of allah wa khayru al-hadi hadi muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved messenger muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharr al-umur muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation wa kullu bid'atin dhalala and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray wa kullu dhalalatin fin nar every going astray every misguidance is in the hellfire thumma amma ba'd my dear brothers and sisters in islam Every once in a while we need to remind ourselves of the importance of ilm of seeking knowledge because many times many of us think we have it all or we know what we need to know and that it is sufficient or we think that what we have been doing is the right way when in actuality it may not be so let us just look at some mainly a hadith today that will reflect upon how important seeking knowledge is and the reward for doing so عن معاذ بن جبل رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تزول قدم ابن ادم يوم القيامه حتى يسال عن اربع عمره فيما افناه وعن جسده فيما ابلاه وعن ماله من اين اكتسبه وعن علمه ما عمل فيه this hadith which is sahih in the sunan al tirmidhi the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the son of adam will not depart afwan muad ibn jabal said and this is marfu' tracing it back to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the son of adam will not depart from standing before allah on the day of judgment until he's asked about four things another hadith mentions five these five but it adds in one area about his life what condition what condition he left it you will be asked about your life and how you lived it about your body what things you put it through did you put it through seeking disobedience and seeking your desires or through serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on your wealth from where did you earn it and another narration it mentions min ayna ktasabahu wa fi ma anfaqu and where did you spend it in that other narration that mentions as five and then you will be asked about your knowledge or in what you did because of it so this knowledge is something you will be questioned about qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam man yurid Allah bihi khair yafiqhu fi ad-din The Prophet sallallahu he said in the authentic hadith in Bukhari and Muslim whoever Allah wishes good for he gives him or her understanding of the religion and this understanding of the deen cannot happen without seeking knowledge wa an ibn abbas radiyallahu anhuma qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam ma salaka rajulun tariqan yaltamsu fihi ilman illa sahhara Allah lahu tariqan ila aljannah rawahu muslim wa ghayrihi The Prophet sallallahu he said no individual individual treads a path seeking knowledge except that Allah will facilitate a path for you to enter jannah through it. An Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam talabu al-'ilm faridatun ala kulli muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said in this hadith which is sahih in the Sunan of Ibn Majah the seeking of knowledge is a farida it's an obligation upon every muslim the male and the female to seek knowledge to not just act because you see but to learn to learn the from the sources of the Quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa an anas ibn malik radiyallahu anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam man kharaja fi talab al-ilm kana fi sabil Allah hatta yarji' 
And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, whoever, whoever goes out seeking knowledge in the way of Allah, he is in the way of Allah until he returns. Until he returns, he's in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking Allah's pleasure, doing what Allah commanded him to do. What a great reward for the one who does so. وعن أبو سعيد أن this حديث was صحيح in the Sunnah of الترمذي عن أبي سعيد الخدري رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا لن يشبع المؤمن من خير يسمعه حتى يكون منتهاه منتهاه الجنة this حديث which is صحيح in the Sunnah of الترمذي the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the believer is never satisfied from learning good until he arrives in paradise and you won't know that till you're done with this life. You won't know that. So then we should be seeking that good, seeking that knowledge, going in that path throughout our whole life, never patting ourselves on the back, never thinking that Jannah is guaranteed for us. You should always be seeking that knowledge and that nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man humani la yashda'ani talibuhuma talibul ilm, this hadith, which is sahih, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, the seekers of two concerns are never satisfied. The seeker of knowledge, he's never concerned, uh, he's never satisfied with his pursuit of knowledge. Even if he gets and he memorizes, he looks for more to get and to memorize, so that he can learn his deen and please his Lord and teach others it. And the seeker of the dunya is never satisfied. He is never quenched of the thirst for fulfilling his desires, for getting enough money, for getting enough land, for owning enough property, for having enough status, for being, having enough popularity. They're always seeking something. And they're never satisfied until they keep, at, at all, until they keep pursuing it. Some of the misguided people claim that the Qur'an is sufficient over the hadith. And this is a grave, grave error. In spite of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرِ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ In spite of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, and we have sent down to you, O Muhammad sallallahu the reminder, so that you may explain to the people what was already revealed to them. This is a proof from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from Allah's own words, that the sunnah and the Qur'an must be taken together and there's no dividing them. وَقَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِنِّي أُوْتِيتُ and the authentic hadith we have that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, and Shaykh al Abani, he authenticated this I have been given the Quran and what is similar to it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in the Quran, وَمَا يَمْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٍ يُوحَىٰ Allah in the Quran, he said, regarding the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, <clears throat> he is not speaking or acting or doing out of his own desires. He is only speaking and acting and doing a revelation, a wahi revealed to him. A wahi, a revelation like the Qur'an was a revelation. In the remainder of that hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, there will come a, die, a time when a man will be sitting on his couch and saying, I will just follow the Qur'an, what it commands me I'll do and what it forbids me I'll do. And we have reached that time where the hadith and the sunnah, they're being disregarded and nobody wants to learn them, nobody wants to implement them, or very few do. Al-Awza'i, he reported that al maqul he said, إِن لَمْ يَكُنْ فِي مَجَالَسِتِ النَّاسِ وَمُقَالَتِهِمْ خَيْرٌ فَالْعُزْلَةُ أَسْلَمْ He said, if there is no good found in a gathering or intermingling with the people, then withdrawing from them is safer and better for you and for your deen. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said, تَعَلَّمُوا فَإِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ لَا يَدْرِي مَتَى يُخْتَلُّ إِلَيْهِ he said, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said, learn, for indeed, none of you ever knows when you will be needed by the people. So many times, if someone had taken the time to learn their deen, learn about the aspects of wudu and salah, whether they're traveling or a resident or a resident or whatever it may be, they would know, and others who have questions may be able to ask them. Yet sometimes, because of not knowing, people just blindly go and do even though it may be an error. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he also said, إِنَّ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ أَنْ يَقُولَ الَّذِي لَا يَعْلَمْ اللَّهُ أَعْلَمْ Yet at the same time, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said, indeed it is from knowledge 
that the one who does not know says Allahu A'lam. This is from knowledge that you would say Allah knows best if you do not know something rather than you give a verdict without you knowing the proof behind its answer. <laughs> Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, he said, Mu'allam al khair wa mutaallam, and pay attention to this. Because many of us say, wow, I will never achieve that level of that scholar memorizing all this and that. But the reward is still there for you. Qala Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, Mu'allam al khair wa mutaallam fil ajr sawa, wa laysa fi sa'ir al nas khairun ba'd. The, uh, Abu Darda, he said, the one who teaches the good and the one who learns it, they're equal in their reward. The one who is seeking is, has the equal reward, seeking the knowledge has the equal reward to the one who is teaching it. <clears throat> and there is no one after this from the rest of mankind that is better. Because they're seeking that knowledge so they can worship their Lord correctly. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, he said, اتبعوا ولا تبتدعوا فَقَدْ كَفِيتُمْ وَكُلُّ بِدْعَةٍ وَكُلُّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالًا Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said, follow the sunnah, follow the sunnah, follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and do not innovate into it. There's no need for your thought or your interpretations. We have all of that provided from the best of mankind, the first few generations. Follow the sunnah and do not innovate into it for you have been sufficed and every innovation is misguidance. You've been given all you need all you need now is to learn it. From Ibrahim, he said that Al Alqama said, Tadakaru al Hadith, fa in hayatuhu dhikruhu. He said, Remind one another of the Hadith. Learn that Hadith, teach a Hadith, because its life depends on it being mentioned. The life of the Sunnah of the Prophet depends on it being mentioned. We've reached the time where you see somebody doing something and you're thinking it's an innovation, but it's really the sunnah. Yet it has been forgotten, washed down, changed, manipulated. And so you may call that person an innovator when actually they are doing something from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ismail ibn Raja, he said, Kunna najma' as-sabyan fanuhaddithuhum. He said, we used to get the children together. Even the children in their youth, we used to get them together and teach them a hadith. We would teach them the ways and the sunnah of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ibrahim al-Nakhi'i, he said, مَنْ طَلَبَ شَيْئًا مِنَ الْعِلْمِ يَبْتَغِي بِهِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ آتَاهُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ بِهِ مَا يَكْفِيهِ He said, May Allah have mercy on him, whoever seeks any aspect of knowledge, desiring the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will give him what is sufficient for him to do to that, what, what is due to him after that. Allah will make everything sufficient for him just for seeking that path of ilm. On Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu anhu, he mentioned that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إن الله لا يقبض العلم انتزاعا ينتزعه, ينتزعه من العباد ولكن يقبض العلم بقبط العلماء حتى إذا لم يبقى عالما اتخذ الناس رؤوسا جهالا فسئلوا فأفتوا بغير علم فضلوا وأضلوا this hadith that we have in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Verily Allah does not withhold knowledge by snatching it away from His servants. Allah will not withhold knowledge or take away the knowledge from the people by just taking it away from the servants. But He will withhold that knowledge by the death of the ulama. And in the last couple of years, we've seen the greatest of the kibar al-ulama, the, 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 the most majors of the scholars, Slowly but surely, one life after the other, may Allah have mercy on them for the love for the Qur'an and the Sunnah as the Sahaba understood it and implemented it. We see them, their souls being taken away, may Allah have mercy upon them. So this is happening. Then the hadith continued, until there is no true scholar that remains and the people will follow ignorant leaders. They are asked, they will issue judgments without knowledge. So many that we find being popular amongst the people. So many that we find being watched and becoming followers of this YouTuber and that YouTuber, this Instagram or that Instagram, or whatever it may be. Yet these people, rarely do they say, Qala Allah. Rarely do they say, Allah said. Rarely do they say, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rarely do they say, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Rarely do they tell you where that hadith came from. Because many of them call a hadith that have no basis. They're not even weak. 
They're beyond wheat. They're mawdu'a. They're fabricated ahadith of the Prophet Rarely do you hear that. Rarely do you hear them referring to the tafsir or the interpretation of the sahaba and the tabi'een and the tabi'a tabi'een. When Allah's Messenger he said, خَيْرُ النَّاسِ قَرْنِي ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ The best of mankind is my generation than those who follow them and those who follow them. Rarely do you hear them going back to them. Rather, they will take an interpretation of the Qur'an, of an ayah, different than the interpretation of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, different than the interpretation of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, different than the interpretation of Ubayy ibn Ka'b radiallahu anhu and the likes of the, the true scholars of tafsir and the Qur'an. <clears throat> so they are asked, they will issue judgments without knowledge, they are astray, and guess what? They're going to lead others astray. And this is where we slowly see the death of the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, he said, من الصدق أن يعلم الرجل العلم فيعمل به ويعلمه The Messenger of Allah ﷺ, he said, it is from truthfulness, truthfulness, that a man acquires knowledge, then acts upon it and teaches it. This is from truthfulness, from a person who's true, sincere. This is a, a condition, a shart of the shahada. That there is sincerity, that there is ikhlas, that there is sidq, that there is truthfulness, that you attest to the truthfulness of the shahada. And that you're sincere and you're wanting to follow it and believe in it. And Ash'at, he said, did you not see that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu he began with knowledge before action. Yet many of us do the opposite. It's about action with no knowledge. That's why we get the knowledge later and we go, I've been doing this wrong all this time. If we're good, we say that. Many of us will say, I've been doing it a different way all this time. And they won't question whether they were wrong or not in it. Imam al-Bukhari, the famous collector, may Allah have mercy on him, of Sahih al-Bukhari, he began his Sahih with an ilm Knowledge comes before speech and action. We should never speak, we should never act without the knowledge of how to speak and act. This is how we preserve this deen, the way it was revealed. And Jabir radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallallahu ilman nafi'an, wa ta'awwadu billahi min ilman la yanfa'. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, ask Allah for beneficial knowledge, knowledge which benefits you. We have so much knowledge in these brains of ours and our mind self, ourselves first. We have so much knowledge that does not bring us, bring us benefit. It's all entertainment. It's all lahu. It's all idle talks and idle thoughts and idle stats or whatever it may be. So seek beneficial knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek refuge in Allah from knowledge that has no benefit. Ziyad ibn Nabi. رضي الله عنه he said that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said ذاك عند أوان أوان ذهاب العلم the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم was discussing something with him and he told him there will be a time when knowledge disappears زياد he said to him oh messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم how can knowledge disappear when we have the Quran the book of Allah and we have you and your Sunnah and we teach it to our children until the day of resurrection فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم and listen to this Pay attention to his response. Because many of us think we send our kid to the masjid school and we don't follow through at home. We just send them to the school, they can learn and now we've done all we need to do for them. Listen. He said, تَقْلَتْكَ أُمَّكَ زِيَادِ إِن كُنْتَ لَأَرَاكَ مِنْ أَثْقَهِ رَجْلٍ بِالْمَدِينَةِ أَوَ لَيْسَ هَذِهِ الْيَهُودِ وَالنَّصَارَى يَقْرَؤُونَ الْتَوْرَاتِ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ لَا يَعْمَلُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِمَّا فيهما. He told Ziyad, he said, May your mother be bereaved of you. O oh, Ziyad, I thought you were from the most understanding of the people in Medina. Do you not see that the Jews and the Christians, they read the Torah, they read the Gospel to their children, but they do not act upon them? All we care about is our children memorizing. All we care about is our children, yani saying that we threw them in the masjid and that, that part was done, regardless of what they do the other 100 and some hours of the week. This is what we have gotten to. Yet look at this response he told him. He told him there will be a time where knowledge disappears. That disappearance is when you just give the Qur'an or you quote-unquote teach the Qur'an, but you don't care about the implementation of it. And we question why the ummah is in peril. We question why the ummah is suffering. We question why the ummah is drowning. 
Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu, he reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, فَضْلُ الْعِلْمِ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ فَضْلُ الْعِبَادَةِ وَخَيْرُ, وخير دِينُكُمْ الْوَرَعُ This hadith, which is in the Al-Adab Al-Bayhaqi, and it is Sahih, the virtue, the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the virtue of knowledge is more beloved to me than the virtue of the ibadah, of worship. And the best of your religion is piety. It is the wara, the, the taqwa, that you fear Allah and keep your duty to Allah. And you're conscious of Allah at all times so that you distance yourself from His punishment by obedience to Him and His Messenger sallallahu <laughs> إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam as we said in the beginning one of the hadith طلب العلم فريدة على كل مسلم The seeking of knowledge is a فريدة upon every Muslim To the young ones here if your parents don't do it get it yourself Seek the knowledge of this deen so you're one of the ones who grow up the ibadatillah, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you're under His shade on the day of resurrection. On the day of where there's no shade but Allah's shade. Seek that knowledge. And to us here, we may think, subhanAllah, you can go for some of these things. It's, it's beneficial. You may say it on Instagram or YouTube. You see someone memorizing the Quran and he started in his 60s and his 70s. It's never too late to seek the knowledge. It's never too late if you learned one sunnah a day, you'll get 365 in one of these solar years. If you just learned one hadith and implemented it, you took one ayah and learned its meaning so that you can reflect upon it when you recite it. It's never too late. And Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man dakhla masjidina hadha liyata'allam khayran aw liyallimahu kana المجاهد في سبيل الله ومن دخله لغير ذلك كان للناظر إلى ما ليس له في مسند إمام أحمد is حديث الصحيح the Prophet was reported to have said whoever enters our masjid in order to teach goodness or to learn it himself then he is striving jihad in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is Struggling to learn the deen of Allah so he can implement it and please his Lord. Whoever enters it for another reason, then he is viewing what does not belong to him. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Ali ibn Abi Talib, he took the hand of Kumail ibn Ziyad and he told him just a portion of that one because at the time he said, Knowledge is better than wealth. Ilm, ilm, having knowledge is better than you having wealth. Knowledge is a protection for you. Whereas, you have to protect your wealth. So balance the two. Ilm, this protects you. It will protect you in this life and the next. Wealth, you have to protect it. Or you will lose it. The zakat of knowledge, the zakat that you have on the knowledge that you have, is that you act upon it. Whereas, the zakat on your wealth is that you pay it out. You give it out. So it, quote unquote, decreases your wealth. The love of the scholar is part of this deen. That you love the true scholar who says, Qala Allah, who says, Allah said, who says, Qala Rasulullah, who says, Allah's Messenger, وسلم, who said, Qala wa fa'alu, who said that the, the, the Sahaba, that the Sahaba said and did such and such. So we always preserve this deen as it was revealed. Knowledge brings about obedience for the scholar in his own lifetime. And then he'll have a good reputation after his death. Whereas the benefit of wealth, when you die, there's no benefit left for you. Unless you did of it what Allah commanded to, of you to do with it. Shaykh Ahmed ibn Umar, Salim ibn Bazmul, Habibullah, he quoted an excerpt from Abu ibn Amr al-Juhani, he said, I heard the Messenger of Allah وسلم, say the destruction of my ummah will be in the book and the milk. So he was asked, what is the book and the milk? He said that they learn the Qur'an, but they go about interpreting it themselves. We have tafsir of the Sahaba. There is a tafsir for Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. Yet it is ignored and people are taking their own verdicts or interpretations 
of the ayat of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the, 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 the foolishness we've come to. You have tafsir ibn Kathir where things are quoted with references. This is what we need to go back to. Shaykh Ahmed Bazmul, he took an excerpt from Imam al-Shafi'i where he stated, or other than him, from the people of knowledge, he said, I think it was Imam al-Shafi'i, he said, I did, Imam al-Shafi'i, he said, I did not begin to give or teach Islamic verdicts until I had 70 scholars testifying for me to do so. 70 scholars testifying that he can then go and teach the people. Yet nowadays someone gets something, gets some praise from somebody, and all of a sudden they elevate themselves to the level of a scholar. Abdullah ibn Ubaid, <coughs> Abdullah ibn Ubaid, rahimahullah, he said, Al-ilmu dalat al-mu'min. He said, knowledge is the main objective of the believer. Every time he obtains a part of it, he grasps onto it. And then he seeks more and more to learn. al he said, strive to mention the hadith so that it will not be extinguished. Shaykh Rabi' ibn Had al-Madkhali, hafidhahullah, may Allah preserve our shaykh. He said, Allah did not command the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to seek anything of this dunya, an increase in worldly things of this dunya. But rather he commanded him to seek an increase in knowledge, saying, Rabbi zidni ilma. O oh Allah, increase us, in, increase me in knowledge. O oh my Lord, increase me in knowledge. We should memorize this one and make it in our sujood. Rabbi zidni ilma. O oh my Lord, increase me in knowledge. Increase me in knowledge which is beneficial. Imam Ahmad rahimahullah, he said, people are in more in need of knowledge than they are of food and drink. And many of us will say, no way. Because of the love for food and drink. And when our body feels that thirst, or that hunger, we always have to rush to quench it. Yet he said, knowledge is more important than food and drink. Because a person needs food or drink once or twice a day. Maybe they need food or drink even once or twice every two or three days. People can go long without some of that. Yet the need for knowledge is equivalent to the number of times you breathe. Because none of us, if we had true knowledge, none of us do what we would do if we had true knowledge. Which with every breath we would say, Alhamdulillah. We would glorify our Lord, we would praise Him and thank Him for the ni'am, for the blessings that He has given us. The Prophet ﷺ every morning when he awoke, he would say, Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'an wa rizqan tayyiban wa amalan muttaqabbala. When he woke up, he'd say, Oh my Lord, Oh Allah, <clears throat> I ask you for knowledge that is beneficial. I ask you for a good provision that is halal and for deeds that will be accepted. Another thing for us to implement in our daily life. Allahumma, when we awake, Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'an wa rizqan tayyiban wa amalan muttaqabbala. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Knowledge is something we should always seek. And this evening, alhamdulillah, we're trying to get back into the family nights. We have the recitation, ayah bi ayah, the one ayah at a time, with the meaning and the explanation of Surah Luqman. It is a family event. Many of us do not know the words of it, many of us do not know the tafsir of it. Yet, we are going to be offering it this evening. At 7.15, there will be dinner served to you. You don't have to bring any dish or anything. Just bring yourselves and your family members and your friends. Non-Muslim or Muslim can come. Doesn't matter. Let them learn. We'll have dinner in the parking lot, inshallah. And then we will come in for Salat al-Maghrib and have a family night, a program. So please plan to be here. This is why we're reminding ourselves of the knowledge. Seek the knowledge of the Qur'an. Seek the knowledge of the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. As we mentioned in the text to the WhatsApp group and on email, inshaAllah, Yom Ashura, the 10th of Muharram, is this Monday. It equates to uh, Monday, August 8th. It is a day that the Prophet ﷺ, when he came into Al Madinah, he found the Jews fasting that day. So he said, What is this? فَقَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ نَحْنُ أَحَقُّ بِمُوسَى مِنْكُمْ فَصَامَهُ وَأَمَرَ بِالصِّيَامِ The Prophet صلى الله عليه he said, when he, was, when he asked him what is this, they said, this is the day of Ashura, when Allah, he saved Musa, Prophet Moses alayhi salam, and drowned Pharaoh, Fir'aun. And so Musa alayhi salam, he fasted this day out of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, we have more of a right to Musa than you do. 
So he fasted the day and he enjoined others to do so. Just to make it brief, inshallah, the rulings regarding it from the sunnah. That this day of Ashura is Monday. This Monday, it's equivalent to this Monday, the 10th of the month of Muharram, Shahrullah. This month of Muharram we're in, it's one of the sacred months. And Allah's Messenger, وسلم, He called it Shahrullah. It is the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first day in the year for the, uh, for the Muslims, the calendar, the Hijri calendar that came out in the time of Umar radiallahu anhu. If you can fast this day, it is beneficial. The Prophet وسلم, he said, You kept the Salat al Madiya. If you fast that day, you will have the previous year of sins forgiven. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, لَإِن بَقِيتُ إِلَىٰ قَابِنٍ لَأَصُومَ لَأَصُومَنَّ الْيَوْمَ التَّاسِعِ He said, if I live to next year, I will fast the ninth along with the tenth, which would mean Sunday and Monday. So from what we see of the sunnah, the best thing to do would be to fast the ninth and the tenth. If you can't do so, then the tenth and the eleventh, which would be Monday and Tuesday. If you can't do so, then to fast Monday by itself is sufficient. Insha'Allah, according to Ibn Taymiyyah and other scholars, and although some regarded it dislike, this is sufficient if you do so, insha'Allah, you will get the reward of the previous year of sins, minor sins, being forgiven. Some of the ulama took, because of maybe some errors in, in, in citing or whatever, if you wanted to fast the 9th, 10th, and 11th of Muharram, which would be Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, then this is also something that was recommended and liked. This is not a month where we go into innovation, or we wail over the death of Al Hussein, Rabbi Allahu Anhu, may Allah be pleased with him. There is not a time that we would wail and beat ourselves or do any of the foolish acts that we see some of those people do in this month. This is not the time for that. Indeed, calamity is not to be faced by wailing and sins and evil deeds. Rather, it should be faced by obedience to Allah and hoping for Allah's reward. There is no doubt that the killing of Al Hussein, Rabbi Allahu Anhu, was a calamity, but Allah commanded us to be patient, and to hope for the reward during calamities. So what is legislated on this day is to fast, and no innovation, no bid'ah to be done. So let us inshallah implement the sunnah of our Messenger وسلم, with this. So again, tonight is the family night. Inshallah, we were trying to do it the first Friday night of every month. Uh, next month we may do it the second, because the first one is a holiday weekend, people may be going away. But for tonight, 7.15, come with your family and friends. Get some good dinner in the parking lot. We'll have pizza for the kids and a catered meal. Uh, may Allah reward the brother for doing so. For us to have, inshallah. And then we'll have between Maghrib and Isha, the family night to learn Surah Luqman and its meaning and explanation, inshallah. The applications for the school kids, for the, for the Islamic school, which begins in September, we're taking the applications from now so we can organize the students appropriately and place them into the right classes, etc. and order the right materials that we need to order so we're ready to run and gun to give them this knowledge we're talking about them having. Not just caring that they memorize so they have knowledge of their deen. And as Imam Malik said, what they need for their day and their night. The tawheed, the aqeedah, the wudu, the salah, and the likes of these matters to know the halal and the haram. So inshallah, register your children for ages 4 to 18 are accepted, and we will inshallah get them running and gunning inshallah in September. Allahumma khir al Muslimin wa al Muslimat, al Mu'minin wa al Mu'minat, al Ahiyah al Muhammad al Amwad, al Kaan Tasmi' al Qarib al Mujib al Da'wat, Ya Muqallib al Qulub, Thabit Qulub al Aladinik, Ya Muqallib al Qulub, Thabit Qulub al Aladinik, Ya Muqallib al Qulub, Thabit Qulub al Aladinik. اللهم إننا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا يا أرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين